to the Cruel Room. We're here once again in this wonderful ranty room for all things Formula One. So, the USA Grand Prix has come to a close. And what could be said about that weekend overall? It was okay, wasn't it? It wasn't bad at all, especially after a few weeks away. The last thing you want is a boring race on your hands, but this one was exciting in places. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't a thriller. You know, the mid-phase of the race was a little bit difficult. But a lot of uh, interesting battles and duels up and down throughout the field. It was quite nice. Great to see Ferrari get strategies spot on as well, of course. They seem to have really got their act together this year. And yet, yeah, nice to see some uh, returning drivers and some young drivers get some really good points on the board as well throughout the weekend. So if you've never seen this series before, I award the drivers out a maximum of 10 points based on their overall race weekend's performance, and I can go all the way down to zero for any drivers that did particularly badly. Take a look out for bonus points, though. They're sometimes not for some drivers to do something extra special during a race, and on the very rare occasion I do award minus points, those drivers do something extra special, but for all the wrong reasons. Now, as this is a sprint race format, the new introduction this year is that any driver that does particularly well in the sprint race can be awarded up to three additional bonus points on top of the score that they get for, for the overall race weekend. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And without further ado, let's take a look at the scoreboard, shall we? They're on the screen now for you to have a look at. As you can see on the scoreboard so far, we've got Daniel Ricciardo there, who will be replaced by Liam Lawson come the end of this episode. We've got the Lone Ranger in Franco Colapinto, unfortunately, down there at the bottom. Not his fault at all that he joined late, but that's just one of those things. And, uh, yeah, just take a look and see where your favourite driver is. And based on this race weekend's performance, can you see them going up? Can you see them going down? Certainly a lot to play for this race. There was a crucial one, that, as mentioned, there were some good drives, but also some difficult races in there too. Let's take a look at the team standings as well, of course. Now, as always, these are just preliminary results, as the minus points that are at the side of each team will be minused at the final round. So just have a quick rough calculation. Just because they're in those positions now does not necessarily mean they will finish there. Those minus points are still to come off. So without further ado, then let's kick things off with the race winner then, shall we? It is, of course, Sha La La. Oh, sacre bleu. Sha La 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 La. Fantastic stuff by the Ferrari squad this weekend. And what makes it that little bit more impressive with Ferrari this weekend? No updates. During this off period, they have got no updates to offer to the table on this USA Grand Prix. They have literally just gone, yeah, we're happy with the car we've got. We think it'll be strong in Austin, and strong it was. You could see the potential of it in the sprint race itself, where they were, obviously, the tyre management and things was certainly a lot better than the likes of George Russell in the Mercedes. Both drivers able to carve their way through there. And then in the main race itself, OK, qualifying on the second row, that's a good effort, good start. But then Charles Leclerc, wow, 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 wow. From P4 all the way up into P1. P1, I say. Fantastic, fantastic effort. He, he was up into first place and he was away and gone, wasn't he? Nothing else could stop him from that moment on. He did a really, really good job, a really solid job. And even the commentators mentioned that it's unfortunate that we've not been able to see much of Charles Leclerc this race because he's just been driving flawlessly. And that's exactly what happened. That is how his race went. It was perfect. There was nothing you could fall. You didn't even have to go back to a replay like Lando at Singapore because he made a mistake even though he was 30 seconds up the road none of that from Charles there was no need to see him because he was just driving that perfectly and for that reason there's not much to actually say about his race although it was pretty good wasn't it it was pretty bloody good so for Shalala I am awarding him a maximum of 10 points of course based on this race weekend overall fantastic fantastic stuff Charles 10 points to you my friend for a faultless weekend overall well done well done Stunning stuff. Second place, we come to Carlos Sainz. Smooth operator. Smooth operator. Smooth indeed. A Ferrari un and deux. Or uno duo in Italian, I believe. There you go. That's as far as my lingo stretches. Um, yeah, a fantastic effort once again by uh, Sainz this weekend. Uh, the sprint the sprint format was particularly well as well. 
Great dice and great duel between those two drivers of Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz in that sprint format. Of course, they did really, really well. Uh, they kept the, fe the racing fair, kept it honest, kept it clean, and most importantly, didn't crash into each other. But Sainz got the upper hand in that sprint format, didn't he? And then on the last lap, Lando made a mistake and he nipped through into P2 as well. So that was particularly special. That was a good effort, that, in the sprint format by, uh, for me, for Carlos. And in the main race itself, again, did a really good launch off the line. Managed to get ahead of Lando Norris, who slipped to fourth from pole position and then and remained third behind Max Verstappen throughout the majority of the first stint of the race and then Ferrari played a blinder with a strategy call can you believe it a strategy call where it worked out in Ferrari's favour and they came out ahead of Max Verstappen and then from there that's where Ferrari stayed one and two Carlos Sainz P2 a great great effort overall by the two drivers that did exceptionally well this weekend they did a really really solid job so for Carlos Sainz this weekend, he's going to get 8.5 for his overall race weekend's performance. And then for the sprint format, he's getting two additional points. So that takes him to a total of 10.5 this weekend. So some may say that's unfair because he beats Leclerc overall. But the race itself, I think, is worthy of an 8.5. And I do think he deserves a couple of additional points for the sprint format over um, Charles Leclerc just for the simple fact that he was able to finish P2 got a good move on Norris got a good move on his teammate as well provided some great entertainment it was science that was doing all the attacking and uh, yeah I think that's fair both Ferrari drivers absolute credit to the team this weekend Ferrari a credit to themselves as well fantastic fantastic effort by the pair of them it's a total of 10.5 to Gallo Saints. Then we come to Max Verstappen in the Red Bull on the podium. Uh, is this a is this a regular occurrence being on the podium? I can't remember. I can never remember a time where Max Verstappen dominated the sport, to be honest with you. Here he is finishing in P3 after an impressive weekend overall. The sprint format certainly wasn't to be sniffed at, was it? Uh, he did a really, really good job in the sprint qualifying to get pole position, sprint race to get the win in the sprint race. In qualifying itself on Saturday, very, very unlucky to not snatch pole position away from Lando Norris. Was two tenths up after the second sector, but unfortunately George Russell binning it meant that all of those laps were aborted. And uh, yeah, had to line up P2, but it's a good job he got that first lap in to be able to be P2, didn't do anything silly like a track limits violation and then was starting down at the back. So P2 was a great consolation, but it should have been P1, I believe. The race itself, struggling with tyre life, and uh, that basically meant that all he was going to do after the fact that the both Ferraris got ahead was fight for third place, and fight he did. Fight he did. He did a stunning, stunning job this weekend, did Max Verstappen to fend off Lando Norris for as long as he did, and then all it took was Lando Norris just driving off the track like a fucking baby to get ahead of him, which is just ridiculous, isn't it? Like, what what an idiot. But Max's defensive driving is just incredible, isn't it? Lando was trying to put that car everywhere, and Max was always fair. It might have been a little late move here and there, but it was always fair. He was thoroughly, he was like coming down on him. He was just positioning the car perfectly well. He did such a great job, such a great job this weekend in Max Verstappen. And really wrung the maximum out of that car. He really, really did. And he did deserve this third place finish. I know he crossed the line in fourth. We'll come to that when we talk about Lando. But yeah, Max Verstappen, P3, stunning effort. It's nine points on the board to Max Verstappen this weekend. Some people are going to think that's harsh. And yeah, it probably is harsh, to be honest. He probably did deserve a perfect 10, but... I just wanted to emphasise how good of a weekend Ferrari had this weekend overall. And uh, Max Verstappen, mightily impressive. And he's nine points on the ball team. And again, don't want to discredit him. Don't want to take anything away from his efforts this weekend. He's done sublimely well. I just can't go giving everyone ten though, can I? Nine to Max Verstappen. Finishing in fourth place after starting in pole position, we come to Lando, Lando Norris. <laughs> Josh is really scraping the bell now. I scored a podium in F1, don't you know? It might have been my last race in F1, but still, I managed it. And there we have it, Michael Andretti of the week to Lando Norris. What a fitting tribute. What a fitting tribute. Fantastic stuff. Uh, yeah, honestly, Lando, what are you doing this weekend, pal? Fluffed it, fluffed it, fluffed it. Bottled it, bottled it, bottled it. And the amount of people that will be saying, oh, I know, but fourth place is such a good position. No, it's fucking not. No, it's not. It's not a good position. Should have won the sprint. Should have won the race. Blah, 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 blah. 
He's not going to win the championship. We've been saying it for long enough. Mathematically, he's catching him up. Blah, blah, blah. Don't give a shit. Right? He has been shown up again this race weekend. Again. And it's not acceptable, Lando. It really isn't. That car was the fastest car this weekend overall. And maybe, just maybe, he might have got pipped like by Leclerc. If you, if you just want to believe that Leclerc was this super anomaly this weekend, this superhuman man, that's still P2 for Lando. Where did he finish? P4. Who did he finish behind? Max Verstappen, his main title rival. <clears throat> what did he do in the sprint race? Was running behind his main title rival, Verstappen. Then what did he do? Come under a bit of pressure from the two Ferraris and fluffed it and lost out to one. Was lucky not to lose out to both. Fluffed it, bottled it, absolutely bottled it. So yeah, absolute bottled job. Once again, Lando Norris, living up to what I've said all along, but people can't see it, and I know people are fucking blind, and people are going, oh, well, uh, I think I think uh, of the week's really, really harsh. Well, it might be, but also he's getting minus 10. He's getting minus 10 off his score as well, because I'm sick of it. So if you think of the week's harsh, Michael Andretti, it's minus 10 off his points as well, <clears throat> because he's really infuriating me now. It's not acceptable. He has got not he has not got the wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat skills, has he? He clearly can't do it. It was it was proof with that with Max. Couldn't find a way around him without just driving off the goddamn track by a mile, and then coming out ahead and going, I have the corner, I have the corner. How? How did you have the corner? You were always off the fucking track and you were always on the outside. I don't suddenly see how you can have the corner by... Well, I was alongside him on corner exit. Yeah, because you were four mile that way. It's just... <sighs> frustrating. Really frustrating. And incredibly lucky to only get five seconds. What's all this been about this weekend as well? Where cars can overtake some, some can overtake others, some can push each other off the track, some can. And then when they do get penalties, it's only five seconds. Yet when it's anywhere near the midfield, normally, like the likes of Magnussen, for example, minimum of ten seconds. But now it's, oh no, it's only five now, just to make it interesting. Load of shit. <clears throat> anyway, it's of the week and minus ten points to Lando Norris because... Once again, he's bottled it. And this weekend's proved he's not just bottled it once, he's bottled it twice. Because he's done it in the sprint race, and he's done it in the main race. Two races where he can get points over Max, and he's failed to do so, losing out by five points when he should have gained a minimum of ten. It's a 15-point swing in total, that isn't it? It's disgusting. Of the week, two, Matt Lando Norris, and minus ten points to him on the crawl room. Finishing in fifth place, we come to Oscar Pastry. What's your favourite pastry? Okay, I know my F1 career was short and not so sweet, but Formula One refusing my team entry is appalling. I believe they're under the impression that I'm actually going to be driving. And there we have it, Michael Andretti of the week to Oscar Piastri as well. Oscar Piastri there in the second of the McLarens, finishing P5. Nowhere. Now, I've shunned, I've shunned Lando for bottling it. Well, Piastri didn't even get up there to bottle it. He just ran around in P5 in the main race. And in the sprint qualifying format as well, fluffed it, absolutely bottle job that result so that he didn't get any points in the sprint race, which should have been minimum of a top four finish. And in the main race itself, here we are. He should be further up the grid, and he wasn't. And then he was nowhere near his teammate, and he just never combated or battled for the podiums at all in what is the best car on the grid. Not impressive, that. Not impressive. Yes, I know, but he scored points. He scored points, haven't mercy on him i'm not being funny mate but i reckon i could drive around in a mclaren and probably scrape a 10th place finish so yeah finishing p5 for oscar pastry there not a chance mate not a chance i'm not having it i'm not taking it all p5 should have been a minimum of a podium again if this is this fucking wonder kid of charles leclerc you know should have been minimum podium and here he is p5 oh a great haul of points though it's a great haul of points it's not it's fucking frustrating it's unbelievable. There should be one and two in the championship right now, those drivers. Maybe maybe one, three. We'll go Lando, Max, and then Piastri. That's how it should be in the driver's standings, if they got their shit together. But the drivers aren't doing it, and it's frustrating me. So it's another week to uh, Oscar Pastry as well. Tough. Come at me. Come at me, because I'm getting sick of them now. These these McLaren drivers have been presented with the best car, and admittedly, a couple of wins have gone big in this year due to team errors, like Silverstone, for example. But then when they've got it all together, we fluff it. 
Oh, we don't have the pace all weekend or something. Or there's always an excuse and there should be no excuses now. There should be no putting your arm around him and giving him a cuddle and going, oh, you did your best. No, should be nothing like that. Should be punching him in the tits and saying, no, get on with it. We're giving you the best car. You fucked up. That's what it should be. So yeah, of the week's Oscar Pastry, not happy with him at all. Uh, Lando bottled it this weekend, but Oscar wasn't even in a position to be able to bottle it because he wasn't even that high up. Frustrating. Of the week two, Oscar Pastry. Next up, we come to George, George, George of the Russell. Watch out for that wall. Here he is, George of the Russell, finishing P6 and avoiding of the week, mainly due to the fact of others' incompetence and the fact he did have a somewhat respectable drive back through the field. So of course he got himself into Q3, and then binned it. And then they had to change the chassis. And they had no uh, spare floors. They had to take the car out of part firm A. Because the new floor that was fitted uh, could not be fitted again. Because it was the only one that was smashed up. So, uh, yeah, they had to basically elect for a pit lane start. So that's what they did. And George initially in the first race, first rounds of the race, I should say, wasn't really looking great. Was He wasn't looking spectacular. Struggling to get through the field or so it seemed. But he was clearly just biding his time. He got a bullshit five-second time penalty for just pushing Bottas off the track, even though he didn't. He had the corner. The corner was his. If that was a wall, Bottas would have backed out and George would have still made the corner. So that was a bullshit five-second time penalty right there. But it doesn't matter about that because it didn't matter in the race itself anyway. And P6 was the best result he was going to manage. Potentially without that five second time penalty, he could have maybe got Oscar. He had to serve in a stop, of course. But <clears throat> you're never going to quite know that. And the gap was around 11 seconds. So it would have only made it closer as opposed to actually like, on the back of him or whatever. So, yeah. George of the Russell this weekend spared and of the week uh, for his incident due to the fact that he had a somewhat respectable recovery. And judging by where that Mercedes was realistically, a top five was possible, I would say. He's finished sixth from pit lane start. Fair effort. And it's four points. Four points to uh, George of the Russell this weekend. The Mercedes not really having the best of cars this time around. Certainly the fourth best team, I would say, this weekend. And he gets a P6 out of it. Not bad at all. Four to George of the Russell. Shame about the shunt. Next up, we come to Sergio Perez. Disqualified on the cruel room anyway. Has been for some time, so we don't talk about his race. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to speak about anything about it. So we're just going to move swiftly on to... Nico Ulkenberg. Oh, I needed that. Well done, Nico Hulkenberg. A P8 finish in that sexy ass car. Fantastic effort, fantastic effort by Nico this weekend overall. The only thing that sort of went wrong this weekend for him was basically the qualifying itself for the main race, where he should have got into Q3 and was eliminated and knocked out and started uh, qualified P12, started P11 as a result of Georgia's pit lane start. So that was the only thing that really went wrong this weekend. He was he didn't quite get into Q3. But apart from that, you know, the race itself came his way. He delivered well. He stayed ahead of the cars he needed to stay ahead of. It was a shame he was uh, picked to the post by Perez, actually, because towards the end they were matching each other quite well. So it's a shame that Haas didn't think about that because maybe, just maybe, if they'd have done a slightly different strategy, then again they could have lost out to the others, couldn't they? So maybe all if, buts and maybes. But there was potential there, I would say, to maybe have, you know, Got got Perez as an absolute maximum, but nonetheless, P8 finish is a stunning finish. Finish any of your main rivals with the Max Tampan RBs, the Williams and the Alpines finishing behind you. Great effort indeed. Great, great effort. So for Ulkenberg uh, this weekend overall, it's going to be a nine points for his main race itself. And then for that sprint race where he picked up an additional point as well with that P8 finish there. After again, another great qualifying. Where the hell has this pace come from for Haas? Those upgrades look to be working fantastically well now. They've certainly got on top of it. And uh, with that, they've managed to get themselves sixth in the constructor standings. Two points ahead of RB now. So that's really, really impressive. Good to see. So yes, it is nine points for Hulkenberg for his main race weekend. And then for that sprint format, it's an additional two. Additional two points to Hulkenberg for that. Well done to him for that. And it's 11 total on the board for him. Because he really did the maximum he could this weekend. And you can't take it away from that. Where else is that Haas supposed to finish? 
you know, where else can it finish? Like I said, there's maybe a stretch there that you could say seventh, but it was very, very unlikely. Finished over the main rivals in that race. Did a really solid job in the sprint format as well. It was a fairly faultless weekend, wasn't it? 11 total to Nico Olkenberg. Next up, we come to the returning Liam Lawson in the first of the Visa Cash App Maxi Tampon RB. Don't forget your Alpha Tauri Toro Rosso Minardi. Absolutely not. Never ever forget those. Yeah, honestly, Liam Lawson, what a fantastic return to the weekend for him. Difficult in qualifying. The sprint race was very anonymous and forget about it. Yeah, he fell out with Alonso and had a bit of a chat after him. He's an idiot, this Alfa Tauri driver, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's fine. That's by the by. I'm not interested in any of that, to be honest with you. But when it comes to the main race itself, brilliant strategy starting on the hard tyres and did a great job to actually climb through the field on those hard tyres. Everyone else that started on the hards made no progress whatsoever early on in the race. Um, and then he was just the, he was the outlier. So he got himself in a respectable position anyway leading up to the pit stops. I think he got himself around the 12th place area. And then when he did pit to go into the fresh mediums, carved his way through the field and ended up in P9, which is a sublime effort. Two points on the board on his return. And really showing that RB made the right choice in getting rid of Daniel Ricciardo. That's what I would say. Uh, yeah, honestly, he's done a fantastic job, Lawson, this weekend overall. He's done really, really well. Uh, as mentioned, difficult over one lap, I would say. And I don't think anyone else would take that away from me. You know, I mean, he had to do a back-of-the-grid start anyway, didn't he? I think with penalties that were looming. So, yeah, played a part. But nonetheless, it's nine points on the board. P19... To P9, stunning effort, well done Liam Lawson, uh, great, great effort overall. Securing 10th place in the final points paying position, we come to Franco Colabindo in the Williams, securing another point to his collection. So that's five points from five races now, is it, for Franco? Something like that. Anyway, he's done an impressive result. I know it's only two addition, I know it's actually two point scores total, but yeah. Great, great effort by Franco. I'm well, well chuffed for him. He drove really well. And again, another driver that carved his way up through the field. Did a really long stint, then pitted towards the end, got the medium tyres on and got through the pack. Did a great job. It was looking like he was going to miss out and going to be about P11, wasn't it? But as it was, uh, has pitted Kevin Magnussen twice. I've still not got to the bottom of that yet. There's some weird mentions of disobeying team orders from Kevin and stuff, but I'm not 100% sure. There's not anything verified at the time of recording anyway, so kind of push that all to one side for now. But uh, yeah, basically K-Mag pitted, came out the pits, Franco pitted, came out the pits. It was a duel and a battle for a couple of laps, and then Franco got the measure of the Haas car and then stayed in that 10th place from there quite comfortably as well, I'd like to add. So yeah, great, great job by Franco. Stunning, stunning effort. Again, difficult over a single lap pace, out in Q1 again. But carved his way through the field, got himself into a points paying position, and again, did a really good job to outrace Alex. And that's a fantastic effort. So it is a nine points to him as well. Nine points to Franco Colapinto. Great, great effort overall. Stunning job, and uh, well worthy of the nine points I've given him. Well done, Franco. What a fantastic, fantastic driver you've been this year. As mentioned, just missing out on the points and finishing in P11, we come to Kevin Magnussen in the second of the Hassers. What a shame. What a shame. I don't know what's gone on. I'll probably find out. You'll probably find out in a couple of days. You'll find out maybe during the press conferences going into Mexico or something. But there was this bizarre radio call on lap 39. Box now, Kevin. Box, 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 box. Like, it's urgent. There's a problem. It's a puncture. It's uh, a tear-off in the brake duct. It's a tear-off in the air vent. It's something that needs to be addressed that can be solved, but it, we need to pit. And so he was like, yeah, copy, copy, box, box, I'm coming in. So he came into the pits, boxed, got the set of tyres on. They were obviously then trying to hope to beat Franco Colapinto to get himself into P10. And then it didn't happen. So it was an, it was an unusual one. And then they said, oh, obviously, a press conference afterwards. The, the, they were like, oh, yeah, uh, unlucky there. And he went, oh, I wouldn't call it unlucky. I'm like, well, what do you mean you wouldn't call it unlucky? If it was a puncture, you'd just say, yeah, we were unlucky, but thankfully we're near the pits and we tried and didn't quite work out, but we'll get them next time. But he sent really unsure and he's like, yeah, I need to speak to the team. So I don't know. But then apparently someone said they've heard team radio messages of uh, them telling him for three laps in, in a row consistently 
to get out of the way of Hulkenberg because Hulkenberg is coming through on quicker tyres and they don't want him to be held up by, so obviously then the likes of Lawson, Colapinto, Gasly, because all that gaggle were there and they're on fresher tyres and things. Like They didn't want them to catch up to Hulkenberg because then he'd be a sitting duck on the older tyres. So, But apparently he disobeyed those messages. So... <sighs> But again, I can't find any proof of that, that that happened. So I'm, I'm just going on hearsay at the moment, which is weird. Hass haven't really talked about it either. So I don't really know. It's a shame. And it's a shame that I'm talking about it in such a pessimistic way with Magnussen. Because he drove sublime this weekend. A SQ3 appearance, a Q3 appearance, running round in the points, a P7 in the sprint race, uh, finishing of his teammate. And in the main race itself, was looking like he was going to be on course for 8th. Maybe ninth, and then if you'd have thought, well, he did the early stop, tyres have fade away, but Gasly's got that time penalty, and Sonoda's got that time penalty and things, then you'd maybe say he would have clambered and got that 10th place without the pit stop, so the pit stop hindered him getting a point. A strange one. But I have gone for overall. Eight for the main race itself, because I think he did a stunning job, a Q3 appearance, running around inside the points, and looked to have the points quite comfortably sorted out until... Uh, that that pit stop, whatever that pit stop call was. And then uh, in the main race, in the sprint race itself, I'm giving him an additional three because that was perfect. That was really, really well done. SQ3 appearance, a, a Q3, you know, a, a P7 in the, in the sprint race as well. It's a great effort. It's absolutely a great effort. So that's a total of 11 to give him Magnussen this weekend. And obviously if I do find out he was disobeying team orders and that's the reason why he was pitted and all that sort of stuff, then I'll address it next week. In the in the Mexico Grand Prix, if we find any actual solid evidence as to what happened, anyway. But for now, it's eight points for the main race, three additional points for the sprint, a total of eleven for Kevin Magnussen. Next up, we come to Pierre Gasly. Oh, Pierre, sacre bleu, sacre bleu, Pierre. What's going on, mate? What a shame. What a shame. Really, honestly, it, it is it is disappointing, isn't it? Points were possible this weekend, but Gasly was shafted by the strategy. Uh, the Alpine squad reacted to the hass of Magnussen, and they didn't really need to, as you could see with the likes of Colo Pinto ahead and uh, Lawson. No reaction. It's fine. Keep going. Um, but yeah, so they reacted, and that they just got stuck in a whole world of traffic. Then they got stuck behind the likes of the Saubers, uh, Albon in the Williams. There was uh, the Aston Martins that were just slow mobile chicanes this weekend as well. Really struggled to find the way through the field, and then by the time that they did, they'd already lost the pit stops with the time, and then the cars that didn't already pit pitted and got out ahead, and really screwed Gasly over in that scenario. It got a five-second time penalty for frustratingly overtaking Alex Albon, was it, in the Williams, just off track, similar to what Norris did, really, and it was a slam dunk penalty, no arguments against it, but obviously at that point you just thought, well, it's worth it, I'm just going to go for it and try and get the five seconds, which sort of worked out in the end, I guess, didn't they? It didn't affect his position on track at all by the end. But frustrating to see him here in P12 after what was an impressive race that deserved points. I'm certainly going to say that. So for Pierre Gasly this weekend overall, it's 7.5 for me, for him. I think he's done a good job overall. Just a little bit of frustration creeping in towards the end, but who can blame him? It was a frustrating strategy. It was put on points were possible. His pace had the points capability, but Alpine got it wrong. 7.5 to Pierre Gasly. Finishing in and unlucky for some P13 is Fernando Alonso in the first of the Aston Martins. Uh, I think Alonso sort of flattered the pace of that car, to be honest with you, by getting into Q3 and lining up P10 because that car was not worthy of anything of the sorts, was it? I mean, it's been disappointing in the past here, hasn't it, if I remember, the Aston Martin. Uh, and this weekend was no exception. I mean, points were never looking possible, were they, to be honest with you? It was looking very dire from the word go and uh, never picked up, never got any better. So far, Fernando Alonso, it's 6.5 from me. I'm giving him a little bit more than above average because of that qualifying performance was sublime. But even then, you can't you can't do anything about it, can you? You've either got a good car or you've not. That Aston Martin this weekend was not a good car. And when you've got the likes of the Alpines finishing end of year, even with a five-second time penalty, you're finishing behind Visa Cash Out, Max Tampon RBs. You've got Hassas in front of you. It's not good, is it? So, yeah, it really does prove that the pace of this uh, Aston Martin car was dire this weekend. Absolutely dire. 6.5 to Fernando Alonso. Finishing in 14th place, we come to Yuki Tsunoda in the first of the Visa Cash App Max Tampon RBs. Buy one, get one freeze. Don't forget your Alfa Tauri Toro Rosso Minardi. There you go. Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just what a shame. Again, got screwed over by the strategy base in it. Again, reacting to the Kevin Magnussen pitting. Um, and that sort of just set off the snowball effect of Kevin was able and the car had the pace to get through the, that that back marker pack that they were effectively overtaking the people that were yet to stop. And the likes of Gasly and Sonoda got stuck behind those, unable to overtake much slower cars for a long length of time. Totally screwed him over in strategy, was looking on course for a P11 finish, so outside the points anyway. And then, unfortunately, he had a spin at turn one, which was just in, in frustration. Even he said, yeah, the spin was on me, but unfortunately, at that point, the race was already over because of the strategy option, the, the strategy call that was given. He got a little bit angsty on the radio when, obviously, Lawson came out ahead, and he's like, how's that happened, guys? Like, oh, yeah, he was much quicker. Well, yeah, he would be in clear air, wouldn't he? Snow has been stuck in absolute dog dirt for fucking ages. But, yeah, uh, Sonoda this weekend, I, I do think frustration got to him. That's why he had the spin. The radio messages, of course, I think were justified, but do it behind the scenes again. It wasn't like it was full-on kicking off, so I'm not going to de deduct him anything for that. And overall for UK, it's going to be four from me. It's a frustrating, just below average performance because of that spin. You know, it was a shame. He wouldn't get points anyway, and that would have been like, I'd have been giving him similar to Gasly then in that scenario because it wasn't his fault. He was outside the points after what was a great qualifying effort, a great start to the race. It was just circumstance, but unfortunately, when you have a spin and you let frustration get in the way of your actual race pace, even if it's not points anyway, it has to be marked down. So it's 4 2. Yuki Tsunoda. Next up, we come to Lance Stroll, who's disqualified on the Krull Room anyway, so I don't really want to talk about his race. All I will say is, though, the consistency of the FIA once again proving that they know no limits because uh, Lance Stroll overtook Alex Albon at the start of the race off the track, just went round his outside, just not quite as aggressively off the track, I must admit, as uh, Norris did on Max, but was still off the track nonetheless, popped out ahead of him, and they're like, no further action. No further action on that one, guys. Don't worry about it. We did... Who? What? Stroll? No. I don't know, mate. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. No, no. No, I didn't see... Oh, oh, let me just... Just a big pile of cash there. I wonder where that's come from. No, no, I've not seen anything, mate. What? Your your son? Your son off track? Overtake... No. No, mate. Never saw a thing. Never saw a thing. All right. No worries, Lawrence. See you later, mate. See you soon. Bye. Yeah, fucking twat. So yeah, he, he can just get away with driving off the track, no penalty, can he? But that's all right, because it's a Canadian lover boy. That's right, could do no wrong in anyone's eyes, because he's got a fat checkbook. Well, his daddy has anyway. In fact, his mummy has, but his mummy doesn't come to the races, and daddy just looks like he's got all the money. Great. Anyway, great, we got that sorted. So yeah, um, yeah, not interested. Not interested at all, and uh, he can do what he wants. That's that. And finishing in sixth place, we come to the second of the Williams cars in Alex Albon. <laughs> I've been successful in many forms of motorsport throughout my career. Sadly, F1 just didn't work out for me. In more ways than one, it seems. <laughs> And there we have it. And of the week two, Alex Albon for what has only can be described as a tough weekend. Uh, yeah, absolutely nowhere at any point this weekend, which is a huge, huge shame. Uh, the spring qualifying, he had a spin, so was down at the back. And then obviously because he was at the back, they're like, well, you're not going to get up to eighth or score any points. So just don't risk anything. And I think he just finished out of the two Saubers from that point on, which fine, whatever. Then in the main race itself, knocked out in Q1. Admittedly, yeah, Carla Pinto was as well, but I think there was a Q2 appearance as an absolute minimum in that Williams. Uh, it was certainly looking quick in places. It was looking quick in areas. The race pace proved it had uh, pace in it, especially in the hands of Carla Pinto. So, yeah, Q1 elimination in the main weekend itself was uh, difficult on the back foot, but at least you can do something from there. But unfortunately, as always, being down there and in, in that kind of gaggle at the pack, you're going to get involved in a first corner skirmish, and he did just that. He uh, he tagged Ocon, but it was as a result of a push from Bottas behind. So it wasn't all Al Alex's fault in that scenario. Uh, Bottas hitting the back of Alex gave Alex rear floor diffuser damage, and he also sustained a little bit of front wing damage as well, which which is what happened when he pirouetted Ocon around. <clears throat> and then he came in for an early stop, obviously to change the nose that we didn't see on the telly behind the safety car. And then uh, that was that. He was just running around at the back then. And he said in the press conference afterwards, I just wish to come over the radio and tell me to retire. So, yeah, he kind of threw the towel in at that point anyway. 
and here he is just finishing it with a couple of Saubers really. Nothing much to write home about unfortunately for Alex. So yeah, it is an of the week to him and it has to be, uh, yeah, uh, nothing. He, he may as well have not been there. That's the trouble, isn't it? You know, if, if you're not going to be participating in anything more than Q1s, it has to be an of the week, sadly. So yeah, difficult weekend for Alex, but... It is one of those, it really is, and Colo Pinto scoring the point as well. More questions will be asked of Alex, can he really be a rival to Science next year? I think he needs to work hard in the off-season to give it a serious go, but we've still got a few races left this season, maybe Mexico he can dust himself down and go again, uh, but we'll see. But for now, it is an of the week to Alex Albon. Next up, we come to Valtteri Bottas in the first of the state kick me up the ass salvers. It's three points, it's three points, it's, that's all he's getting. I, I don't really know what else to say about it, to be honest with you. Um... Yeah, like I say, he got involved, he bumped into the back of Alex at the start at Turn 1, but it's a weird corner where you can go like 15 wide, then you've got to funnel into one, and it's not as if it was anyone's actual fault, you know, it's just one of those things, It's it, that's what happens when you're down there, you know, it, the further up the grid you are, you're more or less likely to get away from the idiots, you know, so... Yeah, he was down at the back of the back gaggle and just bumped into a back of a car that was slowing more than he expected it to in Alex because he was avoiding or trying to avoid Ocon that had cut across the front of him. Spun him around. Anyway, that's that's by the by. And it is, unfortunately, uh, just three points to Bottas because what the hell else can I do with these Saubers that are just trundling around at the back? Nothing, can I? Absolutely nothing. Three to Bottas. Then we come to SD, SD Besti Ocon, SD, SD Besti to you. Ain't like SD Besti Ocon. Yeah, SD Besti this weekend, tough weekend by him. Avoiding of the week just because if he'd have not been involved in that turn one incident and would have still been miles off the pace compared to Gasly, then he would have got one. But uh, difficult to see. He had floor damage, of course, a result of the contact with Alex. Um, and then obviously he had a spirit and a pirouette and like had to start from the right of the back and then never quite made his way through, got stuck in traffic, etc, etc. So it's three points to Ocon. I can't do any fairer than that. Below average performance. Compared to his teammate, his teammate looked to really have a serious upper end on that car and the circuit this weekend compared to Ocon. And that's what I have to go on. Ocon was down there in the silly pack, having a bit of a fight and a scuffle and a skirmish. Got what he deserved, unfortunately, when you're further down the field than you should be, especially in comparison to your teammate. And, uh, yeah, it was on the back foot from there. Three to Esti Besti Ocon. And then we come to the last finisher in the race, which is, of course, Zhou Guan Yu, disqualified on the crawl room anyway, and will remain that way. Uh, but, yeah, again, this weekend, nothing much to write home about. Did get up into an impressive 14th place, was it? Briefly for, like, the first eight or nine laps, and then went for a spin. Great, brilliant, well done, well done Joe, and then was at the back, and then that's where we stayed for the rest of the race. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And then last, but by no means least, we come to the only retirement on this list. It is, of course, Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> After my Formula 1 career ended, I drove a Volvo 850 Estate in the British Touring Car Championship. Needless to say, that was faster than some of the F1 cars I drove. <laughs> And there we have it of the week two, Lewis Hamilton. I'm not even sure who that one is because I already ran out of the Michael Andretti's for the other three. So yeah, it is an of the week two, Lewis Hamilton, for what was a tough weekend overall once again. Uh, yeah, don't really know what to say about it. Knocked out in Q1. Then in the race itself, I mean, he got he went from 17th on the grid, to be fair, in that first lap, straight up to 12th on the hard compound tyre, and you thought, yes, there's a race on it. It's going to be really interesting to see how he's going to get through that pack. And then just spun off on lap three, stuffed it in the wall. Well, he didn't stuff it in the wall, just stuffed it in the gravel, didn't he? He didn't quite do as an impressive job as uh, George did. But yeah, just stuffed it in the gravel, and that was it, race over. And I thought, what a shame. What a shame, there was so much potential there after that great start off the line. I know we'd done shit in qualifying, but you can recover these things. And it was up to 12, I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's bloody impressive, that. Go, 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 go. Not go off, though. Not go off, but he went off, didn't he? So yeah, that's a shame. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's an of the week to uh, Lewis Hamilton. I can't really speak much about it than that because it was very, very poor. Very poor indeed. And uh, yeah, that's that really. Of the week to... Lewis Hamilton. So everything then guys, those were the runners and riders of the United States Grand Prix Cruel Room. Let me know down in the comments section, did I score any drivers too high, any too low? The updated standings with the scores I've just awarded are on the screen. Now if you take a look at, now have a look and see where your favourite driver is. 
Uh, yeah, there's a bit of change there, isn't there? There certainly, certainly is. Norris goes down some. Are we surprised? Uh, Charles seems to still really have a reign on this uh, championship fight at the moment for the top. He's always been a bridesmaid, but never, ever won it. Can he maintain this lead? Can he keep this up? Can he keep this up? It's certainly exciting. There's a lot to play for. It's very, very close, but the pack is starting to stagger somewhat now. You can sort of see the drivers that are in the mix, those that are outsiders and those that really haven't got a chance. And, uh, yeah, good to see a new face on the board as well in Liam Lawson. Let's take a look over to the team standings as well, of course. They're on the screen for you and while we're here uh, I've just decided as you may see already I've decided to minus another 50 points off of Alpine and that's for looking at like a McLaren this weekend with their lovely lovely livery uh, yeah I don't know why they decided to do that oh we're in partnership with Indiana Jones brilliant another one for starters another Indiana Jones are we all mad why do we want to see one of those and why do we want to see four McLarens on the grid bottling it Alpine we don't we certainly don't so yeah McLaren uh you know, they escaped because that was their car anyway. I mean, thank God McLaren went for the chrome livery. Because if it wasn't for the chrome, you wouldn't be able to identify either of them. So, yeah, uh, the Alpine squad minus 50 points for deciding to have two additional McLarens on the grid. A massive thanks as always goes out to Dan Bartlett, of course, for providing me with the scoreboard that you saw on your screen, for the driver icons in the corner of your screen, and for the intro that you saw at the beginning of the video as well. Without him, this series would be more pointless than it already is. And who can forget Dave, F1 Games PlayStation, for providing me with the of the weeks that you don't necessarily know, but you know you're going to love them. You know you're going to love them. So, this is the first of the Triple Evidence, of course, so I will see you all next weekend, uh, Tuesday, 6pm, for the Mexican Grand Prix Crawl Room Review. Uh, yeah, certainly a lot to play for, a lot to be decided on the standings, a lot to be decided in the season as well. Some drivers need to deliver, some drivers are really doing really well already. It's going to be an exciting one. Looking forward to it. See you all then. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and as always... Much love.